This anime takes place in 1564 in year 7 of the Iroku era. Right at the beginning we see a young man holding a katana ready to attack three bandits. He's afraid he's not strong enough to defeat them. When he was about to attack them, a couple of travelers approached the bandits and started telling them to get a job. The bandits began to laugh in their faces and then they decided to take everything the two travelers had. At that moment, one of the travelers hit the bandit in the face and as an apology for attacking him, the traveler threw three talismans on the ground. The bandits went to look at the pieces of paper only for each of them to be hit by a stone fist that came out of the ground. After fainting, the traveler with heterochromia started laughing at the way the bandits flew. But his traveling companion attacked him because now that the bandits have been knocked out, they will no longer be able to find out where their leader went. Now that the two have nothing else to do, they will continue looking for this leader without the help of the bandits. The one who was going to attack the bandits witnessed this entire display of power and began to follow the travelers. The girl with animal ears noticed him, but she decided to pretend she didn't see him. But when they stopped for lunch, the hidden man started to bother her as he is terrible at hiding. The girl threw a rock at him and told him to appear. He actually appeared and introduced himself as Shinsuke Hayadu and revealed to be following them as he saw their battle skills. Shinsuke wants to know more about them and as a bargaining chip he will inform the two of the location of the bandit leader. The only thing he wants is to know more about the two travelers. The two introduce themselves, the boy being a Sendu monk called Jinka and the girl a fox called Yuko. She is Jinka's oath's older sister. After hearing this, Shinsuke starts laughing calling them liars. But Yuko threatens him with a snake and he quickly shows the location of the bandit leader. Shinsuke knows a lot about the bandits and Jinka comes to the conclusion that he was studying the bandits, hoping to defeat them and make some fame. Having his dreams revealed leaves Shinsuke ashamed, but he also believes that the two travelers are looking for the same thing as him. In response to this, Yuko said that she doesn't want to be compared to a guy who is afraid of snakes. After hearing this, Shinsuke exalts himself saying that he is strong. Unfortunately, he spoke too loudly and all the bandits heard. They were taken to the leader of the bandits and Yuko pointed her finger in his face to say that being a bandit is wrong. The bandits began to laugh at the girl, but she continued to speak, saying that their cowardly acts only generate resentment. In addition she gave valid and real arguments for them to stop being bandits. With that said she offered them a peaceful life of peace and prosperity. But the bandits decided to attack them. Jinka can finally do his job, which boils down to attacking all the bandits. In the midst of the confusion, Shinsuke was attacked, but he is really skilled and managed to eliminate a bandit. That done, he headed towards the leader, but as he attacked him, a monstrous hand held his katana. Yuko soon explained explained that this is a katawara, which in this case is the name given to any inhuman creature. She asks Jinka if he can defeat this thing. He said yes, but only with his transformation. After he says this, Yuko bites his hand and gives her blood to Jinka. As soon as he drinks her blood, Jinka takes on Yuko's spiritual power and she becomes an ordinary human. The bandits, who were no longer able to defeat Jinka in his human form, attack him and are thrown to the moon. Once done, he focuses on the talking monster. First he dodges some punches, then jump and try to hit the creature from above. But the creature holds his staff and then uses the arms of the human human being manipulated to attack Jinka. Our white-haired warrior almost threw out his hemorrhoid, but he managed to force his staff against the monster before it was hit. Thus the creature was defeated and Jinka soon released his transformation, returning Yuko's spiritual power. The leader of the bandits was already dead, his spirit was gone and Jinka prayed for the guy to find his way. With everything resolved, Shinsuke asked what the fox and the monk's objective was in dealing with the bandits. In response, the fox said that she likes human beings, so she created the custom of eliminating those who dedicate themselves to evil. Jinka just accompanies her. In a very crude way, Yuko says that the two are the brothers of world renewal. In the end, everyone should go their own way, but Shinsuke continued following the traveling brothers. He was fascinated by the world he had just discovered and wanted to discover more about how bizarre the world could be. By following them, he ended up going to the same inn as them and there. Several humans were talking about a monster that appeared on the road. According to them, not even a monk with powers could defeat the creature. The monk who died was well known and loved. The monks of the Dangaishu order decided to take care of this case. They said no one else should act. At that moment, moment, Shinsuke commented that if anyone there discovered that Yuko was a yukai, they could try to exorcise her. But apparently they already know, being a group of monks who only kill when necessary. That said, Yuko asked if Shinsuke was following them to help renew the world. In response, he said that he ended up there just by coincidence. This is a poorly told lie. But Yuko doesn't care about that. In fact she liked seeing Shinsuke attacking the bandit leader with so much determination. After that, in the middle of the night, Shinsuke got up and started training alone. At that moment, the flashbacks came with force and we see that Shinsuke Shinsuke was always called weak, but now, he was happy, because it was his blow that made that monster appear. He was wondering if he would be strong enough to defeat such a monster. Now, his eyes shone just thinking about the possibility of him defeating a monster alone. Out of nowhere, Yuko appeared and threw Shinsuke into a well of water, while mocking his thoughts of defeating a monster alone. In response, Shinsuke asked them to stop reading his mind, but Yuko said his thoughts were obvious. In reality, both Yuko and Jinka only came out to see what he intended to do. Unlike Yuko, Jinka was hoping that Shinsuke would do something wrong, so that he could 
punish him, at that moment it is revealed that Jinka is a sadist who loves to punish humans. To avoid the subject, Yuko pretended to be sleepy and she left with Jinka. The next day, the two woke up very early, leaving Shinsuke behind. He quickly ran up to them. From afar, he saw Jinka fighting with the monk with the X-Men symbol on his forehead, until out of nowhere, the monster appeared right behind Shinsuke. The monks ran to help him, and with a well-placed kick, they sent Shinsuke flying towards Yuko and Jinka. Together, the monks summoned a very powerful prison. This made Jinka happy, because with the monk's current power, the monster will easily defeat them. Jinka was dying to see the monks getting it wrong, but Yuko decided to help them. Jinka went into one-on-one -on -one combat against the creature. The two monks thought he was going to die, but he was doing pretty well even without using his transformation. While the two were fighting, Yuko asked Shinsuke if he really wanted to get involved with the dark part of this world, but instead of being scared, Shinsuke actually became excited and realized that this is how he will become strong enough to defeat anyone who appears in front of him. While Shinsuke was saying this, Jinka had just noticed something strange about this monster. At that moment the monster attacks him, but he avoids it and because he felt something strange, he takes the two monks and retreats together with Yuko. Shinsuke stays behind, but this time he gets scared and runs away with them. After that everyone gathered in a hut. There, Yuko revealed that Jinka is an apprentice of the famous Kokagetsusai. He was a very ancient monk who was never defeated, either by humans or the famous Katawara. According to Jinka himself, he was created by this guy. He didn't do anything special to be chosen. After revealing this, Yuko asked the monks to explain who that thing is. The monk, with a very serious look, said that that thing is called Shakagon and she is a spiritually modified human, as she is a super soldier created by humans. According to the monk, the Dangaishu have been trying to transform humans into beings with spiritual power, just like Jinka does with Yuko. They recruited several peasants to a concentration camp and began experiments. Of all humans, she lost control during the procedure and ran away. The transformed woman returned to the village and there she killed all those who discriminated against her before. Hearing all this makes Shinsuke angry, because in this world, samurai discriminate against peasants, and now monks do this too. At that moment, everyone asks Shinsuke if he is a peasant, as he is using a katana, and at that time, only samurai had access to one. In response, he ordered everyone to be silent and said that the weak are always oppressed by the strong. Therefore, it needs to be strong and important. In response to this, the monk said that they did not make light of the girl. In fact, they thought they were helping her. After all, she was already suffering in her own village. This angered Shinsuke even more, however, the monk's plan was to have her as a companion. But now that she eliminated an entire village and several monks, she will have to be eliminated. Shinsuke gets even more irritated by all this. Yuko just kicked him and said she would resolve this issue. Shinsuke wanted to know if the two would eliminate the monster girl. Jinka said that maybe a good spanking would resolve the matter. That said, he licks Yuko's blood, obtaining her spiritual energy. After transforming and leaving the monk surprised, Jinka is attacked by the modified human. He begins to put his plan into practice, hitting her quite hard, but still holding back. However, if he continues to hold back, his life will be in danger. Out of nowhere, the human launches the roar of heavenly trembling at Jinka. According to the monk, this is a secret technique of the Dangaishu, but this technique is easily countered by Jinka's super powerful stone punch in his spiritual form. This time, he landed a good punch and was left wondering if he overreacted, but the answer was no. His punch was perfect to the point of making the monster turn into a human girl again. Upon seeing her on the ground, the monks intended to take her into custody, but Shinsuke was willing to give his life to save her. The monks decided to retreat as they would not be strong enough to deal with the Jinka. However, as every human barely deserves punishment, Yuko asked where the monk's base is. In response, they said that in their base there are more than 300 powerful monks. However, upon hearing this, Jinka said that he would love to beat the crap out of them all at once. But the monk said that when that happens, the monks will fight using everything they have. After all the discussion, the human girl was taken to a cabin. She doesn't remember anything that happened to her in her monster form. They asked what she remembers and then, she revealed that she was sold by her father to a certain man. He took her to the mountains and put her to sleep. That's all she remembers. She asked what she was doing there with them. In response, Jinka said that after the experiment, she lost control and ended up causing some problems. The girl apologized for causing trouble and Yuko comforted her. Annoyed, Shinsuke went outside to chop wood so he could train and also pay for the four's accommodation. After a while of cutting, Yuko appeared saying that they were going to leave. The elderly woman, seeing Yuko all cute, asked how old she is. Yuko said she has 200 for the useless old woman and the old woman just laughed at her. As Jinka had gone out for a walk, Shinsuke went after him and as usual, Shinsuke bothered Jinka, asking if he would let the monks continue to do experiments. Jinka just said that he loves hitting humans, so Shinsuke can rest assured, because at the first opportunity he gets, he will detect all these insects. Jinka's look leaves Shinsuke scared to death, but he still insists on accompanying Yuko and Jinka on their journey. Some time later, they are taken by the red-haired girl to the place where the experiment had been carried out. She also indicated the place where all the monks live. Yuko intended to take a look from the top of a mountain, but Jinka told her with all due respect that this would take too long. For some reason, Yuko got all blushy and decided to follow Jinka's plan, which was to take on the spiritual form and he would go there quickly and take a look. Arriving close to the 
the gate, Jinka intended to knock him down, but the gate was opened and several monks were already prepared to face him. The bald men quickly attacked him and Jinka promised to leave his tithe to the monks in the form of a beating. The monks went at him and sliced him, but that was just a replacement. Jinka was on top of the gate. He used his power to crush several monks. As he struggled, something struck his feather. He saw a monk holding a weapon, but that only made him even more excited about beating each of these monks baldly. When Jinka went to attack a monk on the stairs, he was hit by a spiritual blow applied by more than I don't know how many monks united. The monks thought they had defeated him with this, but he was alive and ready to punch each one of them with a spiritual rock punch. Seeing him resist, the monks began to wonder how long his spiritual energy would last. Meanwhile, Yuko was explaining to Shinsuke that Jinka's transformation has a limit. When this limit is reached, her spiritual energy will return. That said, we see some experienced monks appearing. Jinka thought he was going to fight a monk with hair, but he ended up being put into fight against another bald man. However, this bald man is one of those humans who survived the experiments, transforming into an enhanced human. After transforming, he goes towards Jinka and grabs him. But Jinka changes the shape of one of his tails to strangle his enemy's hands. However, Jinka's fatigue is visible. On the other hand, monks want to save time by talking. Jinka enters their conversation and says that his objective in attacking them is to steal all content from research involving human beings. For his goal is to completely transform into a spiritual being. With a frightening expression on his face, he says that he wants to be a real Katawara. The monks call him a monster, but Jinka thanks them for the compliment. After this meeting, Jinka goes to the castle where the experiments on human beings were carried out. He fears that he does not have enough spiritual strength to deal with this issue. He gives his all in his attack, however, the entire castle rises from him and a giant hand gives him a powerful punch. This punch makes Jinka crash into a mountain and at that exact moment, Yuko's spiritual energy returns to her. The little 200-year-old girl comes to the conclusion that Jinka has fainted. Now, right in front of them, a monk transforms into a monster with the intention of killing them and capturing the modified human girl who is with them. At that moment, Shinsuke tries to lower his head and say that they are just ordinary peasants. But that doesn't work out very well, even so, he intended to sacrifice himself to save the two girls, for he does not want to run away again in the midst of danger. However, he didn't need to do that, as Shaku's modified body reacted to the enemy and she punched him. That alone was enough for the enemy to be completely knocked out. Unfortunately, after doing this, Shaku remembered everything she did while she was still a monster. These memories made her seek solitude, but Shinsuke went after her, as he believes that Shaku only did this because she was out of control. When Shinsuke left, Yuko remembered an old man who died of old age and left her alone. After that, we see little Jinka and Akatawara observing a war between humans. They decided to stop watching and move away and on the way, they saw another Katawara feeding on the humans who died in the war. They ignored this, but unfortunately ended up being chased by humans in the process. During his escape, the Katawara who was with Jinka was hit and found himself surrounded by humans. He decided to leave little Jinka alone and deal with the humans alone. Unfortunately, he died and after that event, Jinka started to hate human beings. After this dream, Jinka woke up and in front of him was a Shinkigami of the old man who controlled the castle of human experiments. This old man asked what happened to Jinka's master and he said that his master died of old age. Very close by, Shinsuke was still going after Shaku, until he tripped and fell beside her. At that moment, Shaku said she wanted to be alone, because she is a monster. In response to this, Shinsuke said that this is not true. She revealed that she sought power after being sold, and that's why these things happened. According to Shinsuke, there is nothing wrong with seeking power. Out of nowhere, Shinsuke fell and Shaku abandoned him. After all, his father would not lead to his death. Because he felt that the girl shouldn't be alone at that moment, Shinsuke decided to continue following and Yuko accompanied him in this. A while later, they appeared in front of Jinka. Right in front of him, Shinsuke held Shaku from behind and started crying saying that it is normal for weak people to try to be strong and he also said that she is not to blame for what happened. While the two were crying, Yuko told Jinka to look closely and realize that those two in front of him are also humans like him, and just like the Katawara, there are also good and bad humans. Therefore, Yuko believes that Jinka should overcome his prejudice towards human beings, even though it takes a lot of time. A while later, we see Jinka comparing Shinsuke to a piece of shit because he is so weak. Out of nowhere, Yuko shows the outfit she made for Shaku. This outfit shows her body, however, it is necessary so that Shaku can transform smoothly. In Shinsuke's view, her transformation is scary. In Jinka's view, her transformation is something very cool. The house that our strange group is in is the residence where Jinka's master lived. Out of nowhere, a Katawara appears and he informs Yuko about a bad guy who demands sacrifices from a village, but doesn't protect them against anything. Yuko and Jinka went to take a look. Shinsuke and Shaku stayed to perform some tasks. Shaku was excited to do her work. Shinsuke was scared by the amount of wood he had to cut. Meanwhile, Yuko was in that village. There she said that in exchange for their help, the people of that village must help other people. After that, Yuko left all happy, thinking about her plan of kindness for humanity. Until out of nowhere, the little boy who was taking them to the great Guragura wished that the two of them were devoured, because they took so long to come. After all, his mother was devoured the day before they arrived. However, Yuko beat the boy up, as she hates those who complain about the health.
help they are receiving, even if the help is imperfect. After the boy is beaten, they finally reach Katawara who lives in a green lake. Yuko communicates with him, telling him to get better and stop exploiting the village, but he refuses to change or apologize. He attacks our group but Jinka transforms and saves them. He says he will kill Guragura for attacking his beloved sister. To avoid death, Guragura pulled a hostage from his stomach and she is the wavering boy's mother. Yuko lets Jinka decide how he will act, because he hates humans, he wanted to ignore the hostage and kill them both together. Seeing the little boy crying, he hesitated for a moment. At that moment, a samurai sliced the Guragura into exactly 100 pieces and saved the woman. This old samurai is a man sent by the monks to eliminate the monster in human form, which in this case is Jinka. To motivate them to fight, the old samurai took this newly united family as his hostages. After the proposal was made, everyone went to an open place, Sekiro's final boss style, to fight. Before the battle began, the old samurai introduced himself as Zanzu Reido, the one who devours darkness. When he says he devours darkness, it's because he hunts katawaras and sells their meat for humans to eat. Upon hearing this, Jinka becomes irritated, because for him the katawaras are beings that deserve to be worshipped and not devoured. That said, the battle begins with Jinka heading towards Reidu, but the guy should and stays still in the air waiting for him. Jinka uses his spiritual energy to summon a burning maiden and attack him, but Reidu defends himself by retaliating with his wind spiritual sword and then attacks Jinka from above, who defends himself with a stone fist. After defending himself, Jinka observes that Reidu's sword has enormous spiritual power. He attacks his enemy by summoning roots from the ground and also uses a water strike, but all are easily avoided. After a few minutes of fighting, both seem exhausted, but the old samurai does not intend to back down. He returns his spiritual sword to its edge and takes out another sword, this being an apparently ordinary sword. Once that's done, he goes after Jinka, promising to show him how scary human beings are. When pressured, Jinka gets angry and the old samurai takes victory over the fight, placing his katana on Jinka's neck. He doesn't kill Jinka and the reason behind this is because the boy is a human, so he can't be sold as food. For the old samurai, it's not cool to kill something you're not going to eat. After lecturing Jinka and asking Yuko to better educate her pet human, the old samurai left. Afterwards, Jinka returned feeling devastated for having lost to a mere human. Meanwhile, the old samurai was eating the flesh of a katawara and it was horrible. Out of nowhere, a monk appeared and ordered him to eliminate Jinka. If not his sister who is being held hostage will be eliminated. The next day, Jinka isolated himself to reflect on his defeat, until out of nowhere, Shaku appeared to call him and he was scared by her presence and almost attacked her. She all blushing said that lunch was ready and also said that she was happy that he survived. Upon hearing this, Jinka said that there is nothing good in surviving. In the case of Shaku herself, she just suffered. But she herself says that she is happy, because having survived, she met him, Yuko and Shinsuke. When Shaku was about to take him to lunch, a monk appeared and challenged Jinka to a duel with his life at stake. He should face Reidu again and this time the fight should be to the death. If Jinka did not accept the duel, Jinka's entire clan would be eliminated. In response, Jinka said he doesn't care about his clan. A while later, during a meeting of our main characters, Yuko asked Jinka what he was going to do. He said he doesn't care about his family ties, as he wasn't even raised by them. However, he will not accept defeat to a mere human. After that, Jinka tried to imagine a way to win, but nothing came to his mind other than his head being cut off. The next day, in an attempt to defeat the old samurai, Jinka took a piece of metal with him, but that was a bad decision that basically caused him to lose the battle instantly. At the moment his head was going to be cut off, all his memories flashed in his mind and Jinka, desperate, screamed and punched himself and the samurai with his rocky fist. At that moment, Jinka realized that the pressure of death had pushed him beyond his limits. He was completely excited to face the human, but a human's resistance is totally different from his, who is transformed with Yuko's spiritual strength. Therefore, the old samurai accepted defeat, as he could no longer move. At that moment, Yuko can finally relax. Everyone was happy for his victory and praised him for being a great warrior. On the other hand, the old samurai asked how his sister was. In response, the monk said that her life was never in danger, as she is one of the most powerful members of the Dongaishu. Because she was so strong, she herself offered to eliminate Jinka if her brother failed again. The monk says that the old samurai's sister abandoned humanity and turned into a war demon, so he should completely forget about her. After all those events, we see Shinsuke being chased by Yuko and Jinka, they were observing how inattentive he is. To their surprise, Shinsuke was bringing food to the old samurai. Apparently, in exchange for being taught how to use a sword, the samurai asked Shinsuke to bring him food. The training was really working and Shinsuke was learning how to properly handle a katana. However, because he was using food from Jinka's pantry, he ended up being reprimanded for his actions. The old samurai already knew that Jinka and Fox were there. But Shinsuke, who didn't notice them, got scared and tried to explain that the old samurai is a good guy. A while later, we see the old samurai in Jinka's little house and there. He said that because he had spiritual power, he and his sister tried to remain hidden in society, but because they needed to feed, he became a dark eater and his sister became a nun. At first, the old samurai was told that his sister was weak so she could be killed at any moment, and because of that he attacked Jinka for her sake, but that was a lie. His sister is currently one of the most powerful monks.
monks in the group and the next person who will try to eliminate Jinka. Upon hearing this, Jinka says that he only managed to defeat the old samurai without killing him by pure chance. The samurai's sister could end up dying. In response, the old samurai just told him that in fact, the one who could end up dying is Jinka himself. According to Yuko herself, this samurai's sister is probably one of these modified humans. Out of nowhere, a walking tree appeared in front of Shinsuke asking for help. He helped her and in a bed, the tree said that a woman expelled him from his habitat and said that she would wait for the boy Jinka. Upon hearing this, Jinka prepared to leave and this time with the intention of killing her enemy as she had hurt one of her mountain friends. The old samurai also tried to get up to leave but without much success. Apparently, Shakugan also wants to go and see the battle that is about to take place as the enemy is a being just like her. In the end everyone left and only Shinsuke remained. After all, someone needed to take care of the tree chan. A while later, we see everyone facing the current enemy. Her name is Hino and she seems to be a good person just like her brother. However, Jinka is angry that she hurt little tree chan. Yuko gives him her power to transform and Hino also transforms, becoming just a little bizarre. At that moment, Shakugan takes the front line and says hello to Sogen, revealing to everyone that she recognized her by her smell. Shakugan introduces himself as Kagan, and at that moment everyone understands how a modified human works. Basically, a Katawara ends up being housed inside a human who uses the Katawara's power as if it were his own. Upon discovering this, Jinka gets angry and promises to go over his enemy with everything he has. But Shaku says that a friend of Kagan's is inside Hino. When she says this, Hino calls her defective, as she should subdue Katawara's soul using her power and not become his friend. During a conversation, Hino reveals that she has completely subjugated Sogen's soul and this leaves Shaku and Kagan angry. That's why they decide to fight in Jinka's place. Jinka easily accepts this, as long as the Katawara inside Shaku becomes his friend. The fight between modified girls starts with Hino trying to punch Shaku, but she defends herself with one hand and the other. She lets out a roar of heavenly tremor in the middle of her enemy's face, but she defends herself with some pieces of paper. Soon after, he returned the blow using five times more power than was used against her. Shaku dodges the blow and moves towards the human body giving Hino. In response to Hino uses the papers again. In this battle, Jinka observes that Shakugan is at a slight disadvantage. On the other side of the screen, Shinsuke was taking care of little Trichan and in a conversation, Shinsuke discovered that Jinka is a very kind person, but his traumas turned him into a being who hates humans. When leaving Jinka's small house to get more worms, Shinsuke came face to face with two strangers, a man and a boy with the famous thousand yard blood red stare. The two were looking for someone and that someone wasn't Shinsuke. When they both left, Trichan came and said she smelled a dragon so Shinsuke should go and warn everyone to escape. He set out to do what the tree said and when he got there he opened his mouth saying everything. Jinka understood everything and said that they should run away but the enemy was already right behind them. He first said that Hino would be executed for eliminating a shogunate official. She asked if he has proof but the man with the power of a dragon said that he is not responsible for obtaining proof. He just follows orders having said that he disappears and appears in front of Hino punching her so hard that she must have died from that blow alone. His next target was Jinka but the boy grabbed his sister and used some shikigami to raise a cloud of smoke. At that moment, our main characters attacked the dragon man, but the boy with the dark look eliminated them. This being a mistake, as they were just more shikigamis. Due to this small mistake, our main characters fled, including Hino. A while later, we see everyone gathered in the loser's cave, which in this case was the place where the old samurai was. Hino was also taken there and her situation is not very favorable for life. On her deathbed she said that she actually eliminated a shogunate official. All this because she wants the Reidu clan to show the world its power. After all, just because they were born with spiritual power they are forced to live in the shadows. In response to this, the old samurai told his sister that the clan does not want fame, and she is actually very greedy. She asked him if he didn't want to be famous and happy. But the old samurai doesn't need to be famous to be happy. But her sister out of nowhere invented that she must survive at all costs and to survive, she must consume a katawara. With that said, she went towards our little fox, but Jinka pinned her to the wall. At that moment, due to the state of her body, Hino simply said that she didn't want to die and that she wanted to be able to return to being human. When she said that, she died, leaving Jinka shocked by her last words. Her death left Katawara angry inside Shaku, as his friend also went through this nonsense. Yuko started talking, telling everyone that they need to defeat the dragon, however now they are not strong enough to do so and Jinka is almost shitting his pants just imagining himself fighting him. To overcome these problems, Yuko put together a simple plan. The first is to put an end to the experiments involving the Katawaras. The second is to steal the results of their research and seek information to defeat a dragon. The third is to use the first two steps to become strong enough to defeat the dragon. Before doing so, Katawara inside Shaku wishes to bury his friend's remains. Now the old samurai is also going to take some time to bury what's left of his sister and after that, not even he knows what he's going to do. Before setting off on this adventure, Yuko told Jinka that this dragon is just a child compared to her, so she is sure that they will win. She encourages her dear brother to keep fighting and he promises to follow. A while later, we discover that Shinsuke is excited because the old samurai 
gave his wind demon sword to him and the old samurai only did that as he is going to work directly for the shogun for having failed in his mission and to pay for your sister's crimes. He wouldn't take an underworld sword for a job like this because he doesn't want to be feared he just wants to do his duty. Furthermore, he also hopes that Shinsuke will use the sword to teach a lesson to that dragon who eliminated his sister. Excited about his new weapon, Shinsuke removed it from its sheath to see its power however, a blast of wind occurred. According to Jinka, this happens when a weak human without spiritual power tries to use a powerful weapon. In fact, Shinsuke should be grateful that he wasn't cut into several pieces. After this incident, Shinsuke started to feel even weaker. While everyone was trying to motivate themselves, Jinka didn't believe in their ability to face a dragon. Shakugan motivates Shinsuke by saying that he will be able to use the sword, but Jinka says that it is impossible. Out of nowhere, Yuka wakes up smelling a certain smell and she runs after it. The smell was like three monkeys holding pots of drink. She offers food in return, but the monkeys refuse, because this drink belongs to their guest. If she wants the drink, she must negotiate with the guest. These monkeys are not normal. They are actually Katawaras who love sake, as they are responsible for being able to make a great drink. They follow the monkeys, reach their guest, who is a giant monk. As soon as he sees them, the giant man realizes that they are the group of crazy people who attacked the monk's headquarters and are now running away like a bunch of losers. The man is a very powerful monk and cannot ignore them, but he was not ordered to defeat them, so he gives in to Yuko's request, which in this case was for them to get involved in a competition of who drinks the most drink. Jinka tries to make Yuko back down in this competition, but she believes she will win because she is very good when it comes to drinking. When it's time to drink, Jinka almost faints after just one sip. After all, these monkeys' drinks are strong. Our little fox, in a conversation with the monk, asks him why he didn't do anything against them and in response, the monk said he believes that a good conversation solves everything. That said, he told an exciting story that he recently experienced. Basically a tiger was attacking the monkeys and he promised to help them in exchange for a good drink. However, his enemy was very strong and he was unable to defeat him. He came up with a plan together with the monkeys, which consisted of getting the enemy drunk to start a fight. They did this and even though Tiger was drunk, the monk suffered and almost lost. Fortunately, at the last minute, he was saved by a monkey, leaving the tiger dizzy with a blow and in the end he finished him with a super punch. From that day on, he and the monkeys became great friends. After telling this story, the excited monk asked if there was anything else they wanted to know. Yuko asked what Jinan's weak point is, which in this case is the dragon man's name. In response, the guy said that he is weak against spicy food. As this answer didn't help them much, Yuko complained, but the giant monk told them that he will defeat the dragon man, as he has always been on his tail, trying to surpass him since they were younger. So the dispute involving alcohol continues and Senko knows she will win, because she has always drunk and the best of all is that this drink reminds her of her good times. In the end, everyone fainted and the one who beat the great monk was Shakugan. The next day, everyone woke up with a really good hangover. No one wanted to get up after drinking so much, but the journey must continue. They got up and the monk, before going back to sleep, told Jinka that they should talk to their fist someday. Along the path that the Katawara inside Shakugan indicated, they end up arriving at a place protected by a barrier. This is not the end goal, but the path to the place. They need to go through there or go around the barrier. As the situation is strange, Yuko decides to take a look inside to see what's going on. Jinka opens a passage for her to pass through and act as an intermediary inside. Even though she has never negotiated anything before, she goes in and finds the person responsible for erecting the barrier, who in this case is a Katawara who says he is protecting the place. Out of nowhere, another one of those powerful monks appears, but this time Jinka will fight and he will still fight without his sister's help. When the fight begins, Jinka quickly understands that his enemy uses this strange bag to attack him by surprise with blades. Meanwhile, inside the barrier, Yuko was talking to the strange Katawara and he was refusing to cancel the barrier because inside people can live eternal happiness. He asks if Yuko doesn't want to live eternal happiness in there, even being able to see her old partner. However, Yuko says that this eternity is false, as everything inside died, being trapped in the barrier. She tells the little Katawara that he has already fulfilled his obligation, so he should rest in peace. Upon hearing this, the little being cries and says that this is the first time someone has thanked him. After that, he disappears after a hug from Yuko. On the other side of the screen, the enemy monk sends Jinka flying into the middle of the village. And as the barrier has already come down, Jinka borrows his sister's power and sends the enemy flying far away. After that, she explains everything that happened inside the village, this being another sad story involving Katawaras and human beings. So, our main characters continue on their journey to bury the remains of the Kagan's deceased friend.